How's it going guys, Zeta here. So we finally got a new gameplay for Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Now before I proceed, I want to mention this. I really don't think that this name works for this game. It kind of makes sense why they even decided to make this change and it makes sense because when you're watching this gameplay and what they're doing. <laughs> but I still think that Dragon Age Dreadwolf was a better name. Now of course, like, like I mentioned, I understand the name change because of the story and the way the plot is going, but nevertheless, just wanted to sprinkle it in here. Now, while we're talking about the gameplay, I wanted to share my thoughts initially. Initially, when I started watching this gameplay, I was... well, I didn't really like what I was watching. In fact, I started kind of making these notes and I started saying that even though this game is a lot more artistic, it's... well, it's more artistic than realistic, if that makes sense. The game has a lot more cartoony vibe than even more than I thought so. Now, it's not to say that, oh my god, this is the next Fortnite or some shit with terms of its you know, cartoony qualities and stuff like that. Afterwards, uh, when we got into the gameplay and how the character handles himself, it seemed a lot closer to Hogwarts Legacy style with the way the cape flapping, the way he handles himself, carries himself, or jogs. Just, it's odd you know like when we got to uh, see its combat now this is the interesting part because we have so heard so many rumors that dragon age's new combat is actually going to be something similar towards like god of war style a little close to that at least but then i was like really on board with this like i really like it because honestly uh, what we have known that Dragon Age styles of combat usually were, they're a lot more precise, strategic, slower, and yet also companion focused. In this case, in this game, well, it's a lot more sporadic. The combat is a lot more action-packed. And yeah, you have to pay attention to, uh, to the attacks of the enemies. You have to make sure you do proper uh, parries. You have to make sure you block. And of course, you have to make sure you can dodge out of the way. Then there is also abilities that you can utilize for yourself. And yes, seems like you will not be able to control your party members at all. And on top of that, you will have two additional party members basically beside you. And I have heard that you can have your own custom character creation. So this is nice. So while watching and continuing watching the gameplay, I was looking very closely to see some of the faults within here. And one of them was definitely a little bit of a serious problem that I noticed that every single game pretty much have. Maybe not every single game, but a lot of games do have this issue. Well, I'm talking about the AI, the NPC AI. So they're pretty dumb. It's nothing new here. I definitely want to mention here since uh, I'm being a little bit Chris, like I'm criticizing a little things. If I will have to continue on going in negative light, for example, the quality of the game, like the way they have portraying here, especially during the gameplay, you'll notice that when the character passes through like a little tunnel uh, or the, some sort of gaps, the, the rain just continues on, well, raining. You can clearly see the puzzles, animations, uh, just, there's always things done that developers made sure to put in some shortcuts. Perhaps maybe they, they need to meet the deadline of this game. So it will be coming out in fall of this year. And yet, after watching this gameplay, like I want to get back into the positive things at least. This is more of a style of gameplay that we have seen many times already. That's not necessarily to say, to say that it's a bad thing. I think it's actually might be a good thing. I like this gameplay, definitely more than the usual traditional Dragon Age games. But for me, uh, after like in 2024, right? We've seen so many times similarities within this gameplay. I'm not sure if that's already is a, much of an excuse that we can make, right? But still, I can see the some possibilities of this game being something special and maybe the care like uh, the story may carry this but so far what i've noticed from the conversations and dialogue that you can make your own decisions during the conver like conversation uh, with the companions and whatnot I, I don't know there is something that could be special here but yet again you know it's bioware we're talking about now this is not bioware from more than 10 years ago this is bioware ea this is by where that pretty much does not have the same old traditional uh, professional uh, developers. Even if they are like incredible developers making this game, again, you need not one or two fantastic developers to make something quite special like it was like uh, Dragon Age, the old ones at least, and the Mass Effect as well, like one and two, and maybe even some ways three as well. 
So, okay, so one of the main reasons of Dragon Age being a mandatory thing to have is companions, right? I already touched on that a little bit. You can command them, right? You do not play as the companions at all. You cannot change that, but you can make the commands and they can do so while utilizing their uh, attacks. Or maybe you tell them to sh do this or shoot that while you opening it up a uh, kind of like a weapon wheel or in this case an ability wheel and so talking about the abilities seems like there's gonna be many 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 of these abilities now we didn't actually see pretty much any of them in this game in this gameplay because the character and the footage that we're watching of uh, the Dragon Age the Veil Guard is actually the character is just right right at the beginning of the story and then I have just started watching more of the gameplay and I started questioning it then thinking why did they decide to showcase this? Why not show like the elements of the open world? Why not show the activities that you will be able to do? Why go with the specific mission and the design? Like, I don't quite understand that, well, that kind of line of process. Is, is there some kind of differences that they decided? Maybe this is the best build that they have, so that's why they decided to showcase this instead of anything else? I think I can understand that as well, though. So yeah, nevertheless, this seems interesting, okay? And I don't want to say interesting in terms of I'm definitely looking forward to it or even if I'm skeptical. Like, honestly speaking, I am skeptical. Something about this, this just doesn't vibe great with me. This is a game that had a shit showing for its trailer, like I believe it was like a few days ago. And well, basically from Microsoft Showcase. And when they showed off the... <laughs> Dragon Age The Veil Guard first trailer, I was like, this is a shit trailer. I even said it in my showcase uh, thoughts video from Microsoft, and I really did not like this trailer. But the gameplay turned things around for me, at least I'm seeing it a little bit on more of a positive light. But nevertheless, still, I feel that this game, something about it that just doesn't vi vibe with me quite right. Now, I could be wrong, this could be something special, or maybe it's just a lot of other people feel the same way as I do. Now, actually talking about that, what do people actually think? Because I'm noticing quite a few people that are seeing this game in a positive light. But then, I'm noticing people like myself are extremely skeptical and maybe even going towards the negative side of this game. But then there's obviously pure haters, like they don't care about this game at all. And, oh, I'm talking about not to care about the game, but I'm talking about that they just genuinely like to hate on the game, that's it. But yeah, I don't know what to think about this game. I hope it turns out well, but after seeing uh, this gameplay and seeing the reception from other people, and dislikes and like ratio, and just in general from Twitter or X, people kind of feel mixed about it, and honestly speaking, I feel mixed about it as well. So I don't know, I feel like this game could be something, could be something here, like a genuine treasure chest, but I'm not really holding my breath to be honest with you. So I'm gonna have my eyes peeled on this game, I'm gonna be seeing all the faults within, there, within here, because we are talking about Bioware, right? They're not the same as they used to. Everybody's basically different developers working on this game. So you can't just trust the Bioware brand name, not anymore. Especially with the recent failures that they had, like uh, well, Mass Effect 3, we can't really count that since maybe the ending was a bit of a disappointment for a lot of people. Now, I think that Mass Effect Andromeda is warranted being of a failure for a lot of people. At least it was not up to the degree or the polish that it should have been uh, considered of Mass Effect name, right? And then Anthem. Well, we all know how that turned out to be, unfortunately. And yeah, so you and understandably under like why they perhaps nobody would trust Bioware at this point. But still, brand name, Dragon Age, Mass Effect, it still carries weight. That's why Bioware is still making these games, and they're not gonna continue making something brand new IP, since Bioware already lost their, well, let's say they lost their reputation. Yeah, that's just how I feel at least. That's how I view things at, uh, for this game. Well, for this developer, studio. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, do let me know what you think about this Dragon Age game, are you going to be, you know, considering it, picking it up maybe, do you care about this or not? Alright, like and subscribe, see you guys all, and have a wonderful day.